I'm going to start off with um, a quote and a little story from a book I received a couple weeks ago called Sunsets. Um, the quote is, the only way to build endurance is to endure. The story I have is about the Cecropia moth. It's a good example of how suffering increases growth and maturity. One of the many fascinating events in nature is the emergence of the Cecropia moth from its cocoon, an event that occurs only with much struggle on the part of the moth to free itself. The story is frequently told of someone who watched a moth go through this struggle. In an effort to help and not realizing the necessity of the struggle, the viewer snipped the shell of the cocoon. Soon the moth came out with its wings all crimped and shriveled, but as the person watched, the wings remained weak. The moth, which in a few moments would have stretched those wings to fly, was now doomed to crawling out its brief life in frustration of ever being the beautiful creature God created it to be. What the person in the story did not realize was that the struggle to emerge from the cocoon was an essential part of developing the muscle system of the moth's body and pushing the body fluids out into the wings to expand them. By unwisely seeking to cut short the moth's struggle, the watcher had actually crippled the moth and doomed its existence. The adversities of life are much like the cocoon of the Cecropia moth. God uses them to develop the spiritual muscle system of our lives. We can be sure that the development of a beautiful Christ-like character will not occur in our lives without adversity. The development of that Christ-like character began in me on Sunday, August 12th. Evan was not only my boyfriend, but my best friend. I put him first in my life. But not until now have I really began to understand how powerful and unconditional God's love truly is and that he is supposed to be first in our life. It's easy to only focus on the bad things of the world like the news does so well. But I can't help but remember the abundance of good Evan did in his life. Yes, everyone sins and falls short, but I hope you remember the good things whether it be seeing him in Georgia attire all the time and with that big smile, or hearing him talk about his coaching and football dreams, or listening to him speak about his faith in God to everyone he met. Something that has given me a lot of comfort lately are reading some of his tweets. If you have Twitter and you follow him, I'm sure you've seen these too. I'd like to share a couple with you. For we as humans cannot fully understand, so what do we lean on? Where do we go for answers? How can we find the answers? Read the word. I want to apologize to all the people I have wronged and have fallen short with. God put me here to love himself and love others. You can see your cup half full or half empty, but either way with God it will always be abundantly overflowing. I lost hope, but I found God. And one of my favorites, few will take the path and few will last. God took me to the depths of the valley to rise me upon the mountain of God. We are all his. If that doesn't give you a little hope and comfort, I'm not sure what will. But whether you knew Evan or not, there's a few things that you can take with you. Always wear your seatbelt. Don't take those you love for granted. And like Evan, keep your heart reaching for God, because if you want to see Evan again, you have to see God first. Something my dad likes to say a lot and has helped me with is, life is full of changes. Plans change, friends change, and we change. For change is a fact and a law of life. Life is also full of uncertainties, so full of them that I wouldn't want to live one single hour without the grace of God. And I certainly want to die without it. The loss of Evan, so painful and tragic, reminds us that death is the only thing we're assured of in this life. In the midst of all these uncertainties, the way we should live our life offers us assurance. Blessed be our God, because in him our feet are on a firm foundation. Though the mountains may be moved and the oceans dry up, or we lose the love of our life, God, his goodness, and his love will never fail us. Evan is with his father, but if he could say one thing to us, I feel it would be to live each breath to the glory of God as if it were going to be our last, because we never know when it very well may be.